Greetings everyone and welcome to Shapes.io, a new first taste for the channel. And if there is interest in seeing a little bit more, do let me know down in the comment section below or with a like on the video and we may see this turn into a mini series. Now, what is Shapes.io? Well, if the title of the video wasn't enough of a hint, Shapes.io is a factory kind of, uh, factory building slash optimizing uh, game, but it is highly abstract. In my opinion, it is a great comparison to make with Factorio. It is a significantly more abstract, significantly more chill version of Factorio. So if you enjoyed the idea of Factorio, but the reality of having to manage train networks, combinators, fending off biters, that was a little bit uh, too much and it started to fry your brain a little bit, worrying about ratios and things like that. Well then Shapes.io may be exactly the game you're looking for. It's made by Tobias Springer, a solo dev, and it is an open source game. So whilst I purchased this on Steam for I think it was around about three pounds, so very, very little. Uh, you can actually play a version of this uh, for free on uh, a browser. Now, I can't... Uh um, review the 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 kind of uh, resources or how optimized it is in the browser version. I haven't played it with that. I've only played it here, but I am aware that you can try before you buy if you are thus inclined. Now, as I believe that showing is often much easier than describing, let's go ahead and jump straight into the game. Now, I'm going to generally take this one a little bit slow and uh, just cover what the game is, and I'm going to try my best to avoid any kind of info dump. I have played the game a fair bit, so uh, I am uh, possibly going to start getting ahead of myself. I'll, I'll try and curb that where possible. Do let me know down in the comments if there's anything that I've skipped over or I haven't explained sufficiently, though. Now, the game kind of centers around this, your hub. The whole idea of the game, the whole game loop, is deliver something to the hub in some some way or, or some some uh, volume right now it's asking for a circle but there are a few things to unpack here first and foremost this is the map the map world is functionally infinite and is randomized uh, but you will always find some basic shapes close to the hub so we have the circle the shape that it wants over here we have squares we have some paints as well red blue and green though other colors are possible through mixing. There is a colorblind mode, by the way, for those who uh, who would uh, find that necessary to play the game. Don't worry, the game has you covered in that one. Now, we can go ahead and extract. This is uh, an extractor. They do have ratios. So, for example, you can see here that you can extract 0.4 items a second, and that would become uh, important if you were trying to optimize the factory, but you don't need to worry about that at the beginning. So we, we won't get into that straight away. But if we place one down there, we can then use the belt. Again, everything has a speed that it operates at or, or, or that it can... Um, amount of throughput, things like that, for those who are interested in looking at that. So there we are, we're, we're starting to fill this up. However, this is not an idle game. You can totally play it like an idle game if you would like to, but uh, honestly, I think the game is probably more balanced around the idea that as the numbers start to get higher, because right now we're only being asked to deliver 40 of something, and our machines work slowly, but eventually you'll be being asked to deliver several hundred thousand of a thing. At that point, you want to scale your factory up to deliver more of that thing faster so you achieve your goals. You can play it idly and just set up a factory and then go away, make yourself a cup of tea and come back to it having finished some task, or you can just build more, build bigger, um, you know, that sort of thing. Right, level one complete. You've unlocked the cutter. It cuts shapes for, uh, in half from the top to the bottom. There are, there are some uh, little grammatical errors in the text, but uh, the dev is very actively developing this game. Patches are going out nearly daily, and there are efforts to uh, translate the, the game into different languages and to, to tighten up the, uh, the text and the tutorials. Be sure to get rid of the waste, or otherwise it will stall. For this purpose, I've given you the trash, which destroys everything you put into it. Now, uh, anyone, who, again, with the comparison to Factorio, anyone who's used to Factorio will be very much used to the idea of a belt just filling up and then that's it, that's all stopped now. It's completely backed up, no more can be produced. If you place down the trash, it'll get uh, dumped in there. And you'll also notice that I'm just building as I want. I'm not really worried about any kind of resource because it is completely abstract. You, There is no resource for building things with one small caveat, 
that we'll get to eventually at a much later level. We'll unlock uh, a means of blueprinting and just kind of cut, copy and pasting things around the factory as we want to. Uh, that requires resources, but we'll get to that uh, much later. But first, let's start delivering this item. We're at level two, the next level. Well, we won't unlock anything, but uh, we'll get to uh, that in a moment. So we're going to set up a cutter. Uh, right now, the cutter can actually outperform our extractors, so we don't need to worry about having multiple cutters per extractor. But later on, we might get to that, and I'll show you why. Upgrades. We have stored enough circles, and this is why I didn't just strip these down. Uh, generally speaking, once you've been asked to build a shape, that shape will probably be used elsewhere, at least until the very, very late game. So we're still making use of circles, and if we upgrade this, we will speed our belts up by, uh, by a factor of two. So now our belts can move four items per second rather than two items per second, and we still need circles. The circles weren't used up, we just need more of them for the next level, but we're also going to need other shapes and that's true uh, of everything you've got uh, I think there are five or there may be six tiers until you've maxed out all of the possible upgrades I think the uh, maximum upgrade is 15 times its base speed now back to the semicircles one thing I really want to point out and this actually does tie into the upgrade there as well these are not the same shapes they are if you were just to rotate them but we haven't rotated them so the game recognizes these as distinct shapes. So we only need the uh, top output here. So let's uh, go ahead and drag that down. We can drag with left mouse click, uh, sorry, uh, uh, left shift, uh, and then uh, left mouse click to put things, right mouse click to delete things, or to, uh, to cancel a selection. But there we go, and again, because this isn't an idle game, we're going to double that up. Let's uh, go ahead and do that right now. Uh, over there and there. And just find out which one is producing the shape that we want. These are not the shapes that we want, so we're going to cap those off right there. And then we'll draw these out. Because I'm going to be a little bit finicky about this, we'll uh, bring them down in the right direction like this. There we go. So we're having them all enter on the same face of the hub. Oh, actually, uh, I completely got those the wrong way around. I do apologize. <laughs> ah, again, if I ever, if I ever seem confident about my left or right, assume that I've got them wrong. I don't know why. It, it's just my brain is wired wrong in that in that particular arena. Uh, it's probably some factor of my dyslexia, but uh, it's just one of those those little funny things. If I ever say with confidence or seem to not doubt myself about my left on the right. I have got it wrong. You can almost put money on it. Right, now we need to unlock squares. And uh, as it happens, that is also a requirement for unlocking, uh, or rather upgrading, the speed that we extract things at. Uh, so I'm going to be very happy to get these going. So let's go ahead and do this. There we go. Now we need a hundred of these. And you'll notice that the uh, numbers that we require at any particular stage are going to continue to increase. So uh, for now, we'll just go ahead and speed this up by doubling up the amount of squares that we're we're pulling in but later on we're gonna need more and more and more and more and more right now you'll notice our hub is actually completely surrounded and that might be worrying you uh don't worry we're gonna unlock the splitter and merger next but uh, while we're on that i'll cover a couple of other components of the map you'll notice the hub over here with the arrow that is compass. It's showing me where the hub is in relation to where I am on the map. Uh, the multifunctional balancer has been unlocked. It can be used to build bigger factories by splitting and merging items. So uh, you can bring two inputs in, one input out, and it'll, it'll merge them in an even way. Or you can bring one input in, and it'll split them evenly to two outputs. Or, in truth be told, you can bring in uh, two inputs and two outputs, and it'll split and merge them as necessary. You can click on the hub, and you can go straight there. Or alternatively, and this will become more necessary to get massive factories, you can place a marker anywhere you want. There we go. So uh, you can also use shapes for that. Uh, you may have noticed on the text there. Now, the next shape is the, uh, the half square. Uh, is that required for any of the expansions? None yet. But let's uh, go ahead and take care of this. If we hold down control, you can select an area and delete. We'll just get rid of that like so. Uh, right, so at uh, this stage, 
we want to do some more cutting, but we're starting to run out of space a little bit around here. So actually, we're going to need to give us a, ourselves a little bit more room as well. I want to see which type of shape comes out the top. Uh, okay, that's good. We don't want this shape of the two, so we can happily pop that there. We don't actually want it to be deleted, though. Come on now. Uh, we'll place this one there. And because the, uh, the rotation is kind of set in stone, we can see that w no matter what happens here, we can always build these and just place the uh, the bins in the same place and we know that it's going to be okay. Right, at this stage, we kind of want these to just filter down straight away. There we are. And like so as well. I have made it the right. Oh, I had to check though. Again, oh, dyslexia, it's a hell of a drug. Uh, right, there we go. And then filter this across. Womp. And we've got the squares being delivered. Now, we're going to need 120 of those, but we'll get there uh, reasonably quickly. And while all of that is going on, we can start doing other things, uh, tidying up the rest of our factory. Now, this is where you can start caring about the ratios if you particularly want to. The splitter can uh, balance eight items a second, and this can output 0.4. So we can, we can have one splitter to handle the output of a single extractor without any trouble. That being said, we're about to double that, but it still only doubles it up to uh, 0.8. Still, let's go ahead and uh, thin out this line a little bit, make it a little bit more useful for us. So uh, we can split this down some more like so. There we are. And we'll go ahead and we'll have all four of these being shunted onto a single line. Now, our belts can move four items a second. Each one of these can only output 0.8. So right now, we're, we're going to have a slight gap every now and then. That's not going to be an issue. In fact, we're probably coming up to that point now. We'll start seeing the gaps. There we are. Every now and then, there'll be a little bit of a gap. But the next time our extract is upgrade, that's not going to be the case unless the belts do as well. The rotator has been unlocked. It rotates shapes clockwise by 90 degrees. There we go. Now, effectively, all of these shapes can be the same shape. And indeed, we need a top uh, semicircle. And if we look over here, we're going to need a bottom semicircle as well. Now, there is no reason why we can't start upgrading all of these things as we go. And uh, to that end, let's have a quick look. Are there any star shapes around here? I don't see any. Oh no, there we are. We've got a star over there. Now, generally speaking, the closer you are to the hub, the simpler the shapes. So for example, you'll find a full circle, you'll find a full square, you'll find a full star. But as you move further and further out, you'll start seeing compound shapes. So this is half a square and half a circle. Uh, this is half a circle, half a star. Further and further and further out you go, the more uh, convoluted the shapes become. Every now and then you will still see a, a regular shape here and there. But for example, over here, you've got the irregular, um, irregular square here, and we can call this uh, an irregular diamond, if you like. And these are the way, I mean, they're both the regular squares ultimately. Um, but uh, these are all four components. So you've got your quarter circle square, you've got your, your kind of, let's go with a regular diamond or spiky square if you particularly want to, and the irregular square over there. And those are the four shapes that every shape is made out of in the game. Uh, they don't, there, there aren't any more um, you know, basic shapes to it, but you can get incredibly varied shapes later on, especially because they can stack. You can have layered shapes. It can get quite bonkers. Uh, still, it is a very, in my opinion, a very, very chilled game overall. But uh, on that note, we do want to bring over that uh, star that we spotted. Uh, there it is. Let's go ahead and bring you down as well. And at this point, we're going to try and maximize this a little bit. So we've got one uh, belt's worth going over there. I would like a second belt's worth as well, please and thank you, right there. And we will have these, oops, uh, my bad. Again, because nothing costs anything in, the, in this game, you don't need, really need to worry about those kinds of mistakes. Uh, they're not uh, causing us to lose any kinds of uh, resources due to misclicks. There we are. And at uh, this stage, we're going to commandeer two of these belts here. I want to bring these in. Uh, right, we want that straight down, I believe. There we go. Perfect. There we are. Nice. Now, these ones, we can, of course, just merge on, on with the, these belts down here and uh, not have to worry too much about any wasted space there. There we are. 
Perfect. So we're going to be bringing in a lot of these. And that's well and good because, as you've seen, we don't stop using this shape. We just start needing more and more and more of it as time goes on. But we still need to address the circles here. Now, none of the shapes in here are asking for these semicircles. So we, we can go ahead and make use of these ones. Uh, we need top... Um, well, I was going to say top heavy circles, well, top focus circles and bottom focus circles for, for both of these. So we can go ahead and rotate either way. So if we do this, then we should, at that point, be able to use all of the outputs. However, we're not really saturating the belt, so there's no reason to get overly complicated with this. We can have different items going onto the belt. You can totally have mixed belts in this. It, it really doesn't matter. It all goes into the same hole, basically. So, uh, it, you know, if you like to mash your, your mashed potatoes with your gravy, it's fine. Or if you if you like to, to delicately separate it, and uh, I don't know, uh, this is a really weird analogy. Does anyone actually just like eat their gravy with a spoon and just not mix it with anything? I don't know. Okay, I'm just saying that it's all going to the same place. It doesn't matter how it gets there or in, in what order or on what belt as, as the case it may be. <laughs> wow, that analogy really went somewhere bizarre. Right, there we go. So we've got everything uh, being fed in there now. It's going to take a little bit of time for us to complete this, but we are now uh, working on, well, we're working on the belts distributor and tunnel upgrade, and we're also working on the cutter speed upgrade, which is actually quite nice. Shouldn't take us over long to get this one done, but uh, I feel that perhaps we would be best served with getting a couple more of them out there. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll pop one there and there. This way we can uh, neatly use it. Actually, how much is this pulling out? Ooh, that's now pulling out slightly more than a single cutter can accommodate. So, to that end, let's go ahead and uh, and split these. Something like that will do. There we are. And this is where being aware of the ratios starts to uh, starts to pay off. Uh, you do, you don't ever really want to ignore it, uh, but you don't need to, to, you know, live your life around it. The tunnel has been unlocked. You can now tunnel items through belt uh, and buildings with it. Thank you very much. Now, at this point, we want the quarter circles. Do we need the uh, top semicircle? We don't need the top semicircle anyway. Okay. Now, this actually plays into what I was doing down here. You notice I've, I've got a, a belt leading to each of these. I mean, it's necessary here to get around that bend, but I actually prefer to have at least one belt between uh, any building. You can make much tighter factories if you don't have that. But in this case, we, we couldn't easily see which one we needed to uh, rotate a bit further. Now, I'm going to want to rotate that a couple of times to make sure well, that uh, is all the way rotated, uh, like so. And we can do that if we particularly want to. We don't really have to. Uh, actually, on this side, it'll it'll be a lot easier if I uh, spread that out a little bit more, uh, thinking about it. But I'm going to want these lines to continue producing because I want to continue upgrading. There we go. And down here as well. In fact, at this point, it uh, makes a lot more sense for me to just go ahead and get everything moving onto a, a single belt. And, uh, well, you know what? We can easily demonstrate the tunnels. Uh, they they function. I'm going to draw a lot of comparisons to Factorio because uh, I, I think a lot of people who are watching this on my channel will be familiar with that game, so it, it's a bit of a shorthand. But the, the tunnels are very easy to move around. And later on, when you've got more types of tunnels, you can actually thread them. And uh, I'll I'll show what threading a tunnel, uh, what I mean by that a little bit later, because that, that is particularly factorial lingo. So I, I don't imagine anyone who's unfamiliar with the game will know what I mean. But don't worry, we will we will demonstrate that uh, later on, because there's not much, much reason to uh, go through describing it right now. But at this point, we've got quite a few items being produced. Now, the thing with splitting is whilst the extractor outputs 0 0.8 items, if we split it in half, well, we've now got 1.6 items in total. If we split both of those, well, now we've got 3.2 items and so on, so forth. You, you want to bear that in mind. This belt can currently handle that. 
but you know, later on, it might not be able to. Uh, we want to get all of these into the block type we want, which is the uh, top, uh, top right uh, semicircle. But we can also upgrade our cutting, rotating, and stacking. Well, actually, that's pretty cool. Let's have a quick look at that. How uh, fast is that now? That's one item a second. That's actually very nice. So that means at this point, we don't need all of these. And you're going to find that you don't have to, but I like to uh, update my factory as and when the uh, the uh, components uh, get better or faster at doing their job. Uh, actually, we're going to want to split this up a little bit just to make a, a, a bit of room. We are, I'm being a bit silly by making this as tight as I'm making it, considering we've got a ridiculously large area to play with. Now, I don't necessarily want to immediately um, put those into a splitter, even though I ultimately want them split. I need to orient the, these so that I can split them. If you remember, the splitter will, uh, or rather the cutter, will slice an object from top to bottom. So if I put this through a cutter, it wouldn't give me two quarter circles, it would just give me this again, because the slice goes down this, this plane, always down that plane, no matter the orientation of, uh, of the cutter, if I rotate it, this would have no effect because this would still be going in and it's still cutting from top to bottom. So we want to split these up, but I want to first make sure that they're in uh, an orientation that will facilitate that. So uh, at this point, these are both doing what I want. So let's uh, go ahead. If you hold down shift, then you can uh, paste the, uh, you can keep placing down an item without uh, needing to uh, select it again. At this stage, I now wanted to cut these, but once again, I'm only actually interested in top uh, top corner ones. So this one in particular, I kind of want this one to be in the same orientation. So let's go ahead and make sure that that happens. Uh, for that, I'm going to need to rotate it twice. So I'm going to want to extend that out in much the same way. So let's uh, do that. And again, because I like to be able to see what I'm dealing with, will leave at least one gap right at the end there. Now, at this point, we've got everything is the same. And this is what I was meaning about uh, putting things so tight together. We really don't need to. It's, it's a, again, a functionally infinite map. There is never a reason for you to be boxing yourself in the way that I am boxing myself in. Don't be like me, be better. Uh, we're gonna need a little bit more space again besides. So at this stage, I'm gonna say we're gonna split these off. Let's uh, practice what I preach. And we're gonna break these off like this. There we go. Uh, as a direct consequence, we're not gonna have to worry about these ones quite as much. Uh, I still feel they're probably gonna want something like that. So we may need to branch these, something like that. There we go. Perfect. Down here, it's much neater. So much neater. Ah, glorious. All right, there we are. Now, these will be giving me a lot of items right now. Uh, if we bring these out, and again, we're only really interested in this one, but it's a fairly easy fix to get these into the right orientation because we took the time to set it up that way. Uh, a little bit of fore planning will often save you a lot of having to rejig your factory later on. So uh, there we go, let's pop these in place. Now I'm going to quickly dump the uh, produce just to keep everything moving, and then we can get rid of these. There we are. Now that's quite a lot of uh, a lot of items. You might be thinking to yourself, and you'd be right. Uh, let's get all of these uh, brought together. You can make a nice little pyramid. You don't need anything that uh, that large scale to achieve what we're trying to do, but it does look nice, and uh, often the rule of cool wins out with me. Uh, right, I'm going to want, well, honestly, uh, let's just bring both of these belts over here. That's probably uh, more than enough. There we are. And then down here as well. Oops, a little bit too far. There we go. And we'll have this all the way up there and connect it in. And we should be able to get to painting very, 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 very soon, hopefully. And all of this of just two extractors. Now we've got quite a lot of backlog there, so it's gonna take a little while for that to uh, uh, filter in, but we needed 400 of them. We've now got two upgrades as well. So we can upgrade our belt 
So that's going to take us up to, I believe, eight items per second there. And you can now see we're starting to get into uh, some some painting requirements. I mean, the mixing and painting always had it, but uh, you know what it is. Uh, there we are, cutting, rotating, and stacking. Oh, that one's a much more complicated one, but we have actually seen that entire shape somewhere. So that will make things a little bit easier, but we'll soon be on a much higher uh, extraction as well. Okay, there we go, we've unlocked the painter. The painter has been unlocked. Extract some color veins, just as you do with shapes, and combine it with a shape in the painter to color them. P.S. If you're colorblind, I'm working on a solution already. Don't worry. This uh, this obviously hasn't been updated since the solution was brought in. To be fair, the solution was actually uh, patched in, I think, uh, two days ago. Uh, but the colorblind mode is actually already in the game. Uh, now, so with that, we now need red circles. Well, uh, it shouldn't be too bad, but remember, we still need... Uh, unpainted circles so you don't want to de demolish that part of your factory not yet anyway uh, everything is coming through nice and tidy and at this point we can because the bell can now move so many more items uh, we can afford to combine them down a little bit more aggressively so let's go ahead and do that and then strip all of this away there we go that belt is now being utilized significantly better uh, indeed we want to do the same thing over here ultimately just keeping you know the the factory nice and tidy and uh, we'll just select the whole thing and then delete and uh, honestly i find it a little bit easier just to uh, hold down the delete button and then just use uh, shift in a direction to move around but there we go right so we want to get some red circles well that shouldn't be too hard for us to do we've got uh, the circles over here now the painter that can only process 0 0.33 items a second. Our extractor can already produce enough that uh, two painters per extractor for now. And, and with a little bit uh, left over. But this is an interesting shape. Uh, and it's at this point you start to need to, to kind of plan how you're going to have these, these function. I would like the shapes to come out the bottom. Uh, as it is here and go in at the top uh, fairly fairly uh, nice and easy so per extractor let's say well how many could we put on a line we could have quite a lot on a line honestly we could probably have eight extractors on a line without too much issue we'll we'll stick with with the basic four so we want to be able to process uh four items and we can reasonably have three of the, these for a single item. If we uh, have five extractors extracting, then we guarantee that we've got our you know target of four. Uh, there we go. Uh, so at that point, three of these to each one. So we're going to want, there we go, and up to 12. So three, six, nine. There we are, 12. Now, how are we going to merge all of this together? Uh, it shouldn't be too hard, this one. Uh, well, I say uh, we can then have uh, perhaps something like this. And then there. And that'll bring everything together. There we go. Now, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have the shapes merging all the way down the line. All the way to here. There we are. And I want these shapes to just filter along. We don't actually need this last one. You could leave it there for the sake of being able to build up in the future. But I think this is fine for now. So we're bringing in all these shapes nice and uh, easily. Now we're going to see uh, this backlogging, but we're not really going to know if, I, if I've uh, ra uh, rationed it out properly until a little bit later. And then we'll have all of the shapes coming out along the bottom. Now we're going to do exactly what I did at the top, and we're going to have them all merge. Whoops, that went the wrong way. There we are. Nice and simply. Ah, I should have placed these down first because it's trying to uh, it's trying to predict what I really wanted. One of one of my little bugbears there. Uh, unfortunately, I mean when 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 technology does that well, it's fantastic and it's a massive labor saving device. But I often find I know what I want. It, an algorithm has yet to be defined that can accurately and consistently work out what I'm trying to do. I don't know if, what that says about algorithms or what it says about me. Maybe I'm just wired completely wrong, but, which wouldn't actually be too surprising. But nevertheless, 
There we go. Let's uh, get all of the, this going. I, I do prefer it. It's why I like Linux so much more than Windows most of the time, because uh, Linux just said, yeah, we trust you to be able to know what you're doing. Uh, mind you, you know, with that trust, you can easily completely mess up your operating system. But, yeah, you know, that's on you, not on us. We'll never mess up your operating system is all that we can guarantee. Uh, there we go. Let's get all of this down here. Windows, on the other hand, every time I update it, it's like, yeah, so uh, your audio settings that you spend like a day having to reconfigure every single time we update, uh, we've updated again. So, yeah, we changed it to what we think you want to do. Never get it right. There we go. And five of these once again. And pop. There we are. Now this should give us a flow of red circles. There we are. Red circles being delivered. Glorious. Uh, they are being added up there, I think. Ah, yes. I, uh, I believe what's happened there is when these were placed down, they're trying to balance them up. Which, uh, so we, we were seeing one being lost every now and then. It wasn't really being lost. It was basically just stuck at the top there because it uh, thought it needed to, to balance onto that uh, that um, lane because it had once been connected there. So it considered it a valid output. If you never connect them, then I believe it never tries to balance to that lane. So uh, this again, this will be a, a problem that some people who play Factorio will be familiar with, uh, that an item was basically held in this output, waiting for it to be uh, removed, when in reality, we didn't want anything ever to leave on that, that side. Ultimately, I would rather if I could just close that down. And later on, we're going to be able to do that. Uh, but for now, we're just going to have to struggle through. If that didn't make uh, too much sense, don't worry too much about it. I'm, I'm just terrible at explaining things. But uh, there we are. The the end result is we've got a lot of red circles being delivered, and that's exactly what we wanted. But you will have noticed we also need purple circles for our, uh, the next upgrade. So we want to find someone with circles, blue and red paint. Uh, this will do down here. Now... We don't yet have a paint mixer, so we can't even get to that. Uh, but that is where we're going to want to do it. Now we are going to unlock counterclockwise rotating in the next level, which would actually be quite nice. But if we look over here, uh, we could suffer with... Uh, I don't think uh, we could add much more to this line uh, until we add a lot more to the paint and circle output. But we could just continue to expand this. This is an expandable design. Uh, with without much difficulty at all, actually. So to that end, let's go ahead and expand it. So we're going to put an extra four of these down here. We're going to need that being merged. There we are. There you go. Now, this is a, a very hacky way of expanding this setup uh, because I'm, no, I'm demonstrating throwing caution to the wind and not caring about ratios. Uh, because I know, I know, there, there are a lot of people who've watched my content before and, and do like it when when I do pay pay mind to the mathematics behind it. And uh, I'd be lying if I said that that isn't how I prefer to play it. But I also try to point out that it's not the only way to play these games. And uh, I, I am quite aware that there are a lot of my viewers who get a little bit intimidated when games start wanting them to, to math their way through problems. You can just do this blind. So I've added an extra bunch of capacity there. And so we're just gonna go with the, the, the simple idea of like two per extractor. So we're gonna add another eight to the eight to the queue because we're gonna want more and more uh, red uh, circles being delivered at all times. So one, two, three, four. You could just add four and then just add another four later on as you go. You could add one per extractor, waiting to see if something is backed up. And if it is, add one more and just keep playing it by ear until you get to the correct spot. But uh, for us right now, we're just gonna go ahead and place all of these down and hopefully get this all set up rather quickly. And we may even find that we're gonna level up uh, before we're done here, but uh, that is the way it goes sometimes. There we are. And perfect. Right, we don't need the last ones, once again. You don't require the, the ones at the end of the queue. And this allows us to see the backup 
uh, a little bit more more clearly. Sometimes with with uh, very specific scenarios, you are actually going to want to uh, have a a, a trash um, collector at the very end, just to deal with a scenario where uh, you're going to be using the components in a uh, asymmetric way. So, like one machine might not use them as fast as the next machine uh, along will use them, and so on and so forth. And so you end up with something backing up over here, which then stops the entire pipeline, which causes something later down in the in the uh, queue to jam up. In those uncommon scenarios, uh, you can have a, a splitter and then a trash compactor at the end, just to make sure that everything is still flowing. But there we are, we've just unlocked the next component, which is a counterclockwise rotation, which will be very useful for us. Uh, it will allow us to make much more compact designs. There we go, let's get all of these built. I'm trying to take care not to accidentally hook up the splitters. You don't really need to though. Uh, once all of that is set up, this should be fine for quite some time. Right, now we need blue squares, uh, blue half squares rather. Now, the reason why I've expanded this out, we're not gonna need red circles again in the upgrade. However, this paint setup can be used for any other type of painted circle later on, and we are going to need purple circles for a very, very long time. So having this set up there just means that I need to do the paint mixing and then deliver purple paint rather than the red paint. And then this entire upgrade path is sorted for a long, long time to come. But right now we need to focus on getting the blue half squares. So where do we want to do that from? Well, we've got some blue down there. Do we have any blue up here? We do. And I would like to use the blue up here instead. So this is exactly the same thing we've done down here with the added step of needing to split the square as well so first and foremost let's get the uh the paint being delivered uh we will go ahead uh, you know what sure we'll get all of this being delivered right away and we'll have it delivered down here like so there we are and that will take care of everything there we go and we'll have both of these combine onto this line and that'll be more than enough blue paint for whatever we're going to be dealing with here. Now, here is a trick. If we were to split the square first, we would have to paint each half, assuming that we rotated the half that, that wasn't in the right orientation around, we would have to paint two things. If you just paint, if all you need is just this, paint the square and then split the square. You're saving on paint that way. Uh, we have upgraded extraction though, fantastic. Uh, that's going to uh, speed things along how we can pull 1.6 items a second everything basically doubles but uh, as i was saying let's make sure that we're painting the squares first now we can use exactly the same system if we uh, if we want to or we can we can change it out a little bit now, there's lots of different ways that you can you can set this up and you know what for the sake of demonstration we'll make a uh, make a bit more of a long system this this time it's going to be significantly less space efficient uh, i am sorry to say but uh, i do want to show that you you can just do this however you want and you, you can honestly if, if uh, you find one particular design is prettier than another knock yourself out don't worry about it uh, i was totally not counting uh, it's four eight we want another two we actually want a lot more than another two but uh this is a a much less space space efficient system so uh we're not going to be able to fit that much more uh now down here i'm going to want these along the long side of each painter and later on you're going to be unlocking variants on each type of workshop that will allow you to do a job better in some capacity or another uh, there we are, and we'll just bring all of these down, straight down from a bit. Thankfully, it doesn't overwrite the splitters. Certain things it would overwrite, uh, so you do have to be aware, and I don't believe there's any kind of um, rule to it, or at least it's, it's not explained anywhere. You just kind of have to work out what will overwrite what when you're drawing them like that. But uh, there we go, that's uh, nice and easy, and all the paint is now delivered. So all we need to do now is, well, we could just have this deliver the the object out that side because we're this is basically wasted space it's the perfect place to pop a a tunnel 
ultimately you need a tunnel somewhere in the system and there's lots of places that you can put that tunnel uh, but we're going to be having the tunnels all going out to the side you could have all the tunnels going down uh, which is a completely valid way of doing it as well uh, so something like that there we are and this way they're all delivered in a very convenient way Punk. there we are and we're going to want as many uh, squares being extracted as we've got uh, paints uh, but we don't quite have that right now uh, so we'll probably want uh, another two something like uh, well honestly you can just do this really uh, there we go and then have all of these on this side combine and then same on this side and then finally uh, you can pop something around there and it should do everything we need it to do there we are and then have this combined we didn't really need to do that we could have just run two lines in there if we really wanted to now we could have the uh, tunnel going that way you know what though uh, let me demonstrate uh, again about the overriding smart tunnels will replace all of the uh, belt between them which is really really quite nice it's a massive labor saving device there there we are we'll just have this going all the way down and like so and this means that we can just run the output up and around like this and uh, yeah just something like that I think and there we go and this is where we would then put the splitters Oops. there we are so now I know against which of the items the splitter is going to go I can just draw these down the whole way there we are and then fill them in something like that I really do like, uh, I, I will say that as much as I was harping on about uh, games trying to work out what I wanted them to do and quite often getting it wrong, the belts do quite often get it right. There, there are a few edge cases where they consistently get it wrong and that, that does kind of rub me the wrong way. But for the most part, they, they actually do a fairly good job of, uh, of uh, getting these in the right spots. There we are. And that is our final blue square. Now then comes the messy, messy, messy situation of having to split them up. Thankfully, on one split, it's already going to be pointing the right way. So, you know, that, that's uh, actually quite nice. Uh, we can split these up like that if we want to. And draw these out. Oops, that one's pointing the wrong way. I think four splitters should be enough. This can pull. This can split two items. This can move eight items. So yeah, uh, uh, an entirely saturated belt will be able to be uh, worked on by this. You know what? Let's uh, let's further split this up. We want four outputs. So let's uh, do something like this instead. There we go. And then we'll just draw them out. We need two gaps. So like that, and then like this, and we'll place the splitters as needed there there and there and we because we we don't need to waste the blocks we can just have one of them go through double rotation uh, we need these ones to go through double rotation and then just merge them back down And again, you don't need to make the pyramid design that I'm using here. It is actually space inefficient, but ah, it looks nice. Rule of cool. And we can draw this back out all the way and straight back down. There we go. That will be fine for the amount that we need. We've got to get 1,200 uh, input. But we need 1.5 to get the mixing and painting sped up, which would actually be quite nice. Uh, we're almost at the amount we need there, though. But uh, we are now starting to get into a position where we need paint mixing. And that is the next thing that we're going to be unlocking. Is there anything we can do before that? No, all of these are second tier paints. Purple made from red and blue. Um, cyan made from green and blue. And green and, and, and cyan they obviously require the mixing for the the latter half uh you've also got yellow which is green and blue and finally you've got white 
which is any tier two. Uh, well, it's basically mixing all three. So if you've got cyan and mix red into it, you'll get white. If you've got yellow and you uh, mix, uh, oh, sorry, uh, yellow is uh, green and, and red. I, I didn't say a green and blue earlier. Uh, but uh, if you've got uh, yellow and you mix blue into that, you will get white, so on, so forth. In fact, uh, the painter, the little wheel down here, shows the combination. So green and red, yellow, blue and green, cyan, blue and red, purple, and then any combination will give you white. Or you could mix two, uh, two of the CO2 paints together, but that's a little bit wasteful. Right, we're already halfway towards our goal. It's going to take us a little while to get there, so I'm going to speed things along. And the mixer has been unlocked. Combine two colors using additive blending with this building. Fantastic, and uh, you caught me in the middle of uh, just optimizing this a little bit. There we go. And these can then join together down here as well. About there, there we are. And that just makes that belt a little bit more compressed. I ended up going ahead and uh, adding a second belt because, you know, we had quite a lot of backlog. This is a little bit more than a single belt can process in one go. Uh, so it just sped things up just a wee bit. But we will very soon get to the point where that uh, where our belts will, will upgrade quite a lot. Right, there we go. Now we need a shape that I've never seen in the wild. I put uh, a good couple of hours into this game off camera before I decided I was going to do a series on it. And I've never seen that shape completely um, present in the wild. I've seen this shape in the wild. I've seen quite a lot of other compound shapes. I'm sure it's possible, but I've always had to build that shape myself, which would require a uh, emerging block that we're not going to get for a little bit. Now, Compact Balancer is the next unlock, which I'm uh, going to be looking forward to. Uh, at this stage, though, we need to cut this off. We are going to want purple over here. So at this point, let's get all of this paint down here. We need to mix these together. Uh, let's go ahead and get a bunch of blue paint over here. There we are. And we will hopefully be able to get all of this to mix together very soon. Uh, let's go ahead there. Now we're gonna unlock the compact balancer at this point. So this will probably be one of the last times I use this particular balancer to merge two lines. Compact balancer is so, so much better for that job, and which uh, I'll be able to demonstrate shortly. For the paint mixer, really simple. Uh, two inputs go in, and the result of combining them comes out. Uh, so once again, we're going to do something a little bit simple. I'm going to want it to basically line up, though. So I'm going to want... At about here this is okay that that lines up fairly well and i'll demonstrate why in a moment this is one of the main reasons that i still use this particular component once i unlock the the uh, balancer when it isn't a case of needing to to uh, split a line this is absolutely fantastic how many we got we've got three six uh we'll go up to nine uh, sp space constraints really on this one but uh, again infinite factory i don't need to build it here but i i've started so i'll finish which is legitimately the worst reason to do anything that you know is gonna cause more problems later down the line don't be like me be better uh right there we go and we are going to want our red line to join in over here. It really doesn't matter which one goes away. But we can just pull that all the way down there. And we can just cap that one off there. There we are. And this one, similarly, all the... Oh, I took my uh, finger off shift a little bit too early there. There we are. And we're just going to merge these all the way down and we should be done there we and this one can just connect up there perfect now we hook up the outputs and we're golden purple paint are being delivered right now 
There we are. But this is this is now not going to be nearly enough for this belt. So we do need to manufacture some more more purple elsewhere. But uh, this is the basic design. Now you'll be noticing there's a lot of repetition in my factory so far. I went out of my way to show a different way of laying out the uh, painting block over here. But honestly, once you've got a design that feels efficient and compact, as soon as you've unlocked uh, blueprinting, which is uh, one of the later unlocks, so somewhere around 12 or 13, level 12 or 13, I believe, uh, then you're going to just grab an instance of one of your designs and use it pretty much everywhere. There's almost no reason not to. Um, really, really, there's, there's almost no reason not to. Now, one of the things you may be uh, noticing is we have got nine units down here how fast are they they process they process 1.2 items a second the moment it processed more than one the bottleneck became our conveyor belt i can only move eight items a second which means for anything that produce that consumes that item at one or more the speed that i can get them to it this this ninth one is almost never going to see any use um it, it will occasionally just because these are splitting them but there's almost no reason to because I can only really have eight of them working along there. Now, there is a, a way you can sort this out, and that's having two belts and another one deliver later down the line. But that's definitely something to be uh, mindful of. It really does affect the way that you build your factory, how far you've upgraded uh, your your devices. You don't need to upgrade them at all. I strongly recommend you do. But again, Infinite Factory, you could just build more in order to get it done faster, or you could make things faster in order to get things done faster. You know, it's entirely up to you. We're making fairly good progress there, though. Um, but I do feel that we need a lot more purple paint. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a new purple paint factory. And just as I was finishing up the factory, Level 9 complete. You have unlocked a compact variant of the balancer. It accepts two inputs and merges them into one. Uh, that was a little bit poorly timed because I do want to finish this first. Now, I am going to have the output from these balanced a bit uh, just over here because we've effectively, again, these are producing one paint every, uh, 1.2 paints every second. Uh, so, one belt can't carry more than these out these factories are able out of outputting but we can carry a lot more to these destinations so one two three four five six seven eight this would be the join point right there there we go and we'd still need more beside but that's gonna allow us to produce a lot more uh purple uh purple circles as we upgrade the belts which we are going to do now then we have got the uh, alternate version of this. You press T to cycle through the alternates. And as you can see, that is such a better design for our purposes. And indeed, this is where they really start to shine, is places like this. Let me uh, quickly redesign this to demonstrate. And all the way back here. Unfortunately, we're going to have a little, uh, little bit of a, a lip there, but that's fine. Uh, pop these in. Now, it'll remember what you've set something to. So bear that in mind. Uh, there we go. And once again, as I was uh, mentioning about overwriting, belts won't overwrite these. So there we go. That is so much neater. So much neater. And uh, it'll it'll also play in, part, in places like this as well. So for example, we can have all of the blue squares merging onto a single line. And that makes this little output so much nicer as well. However, they don't split. They only merge. Now we're going to need the alternate uh, version. In fact, I didn't need that one down at the bottom there. But they only merge. So bear that in mind. This is not a splitter. It'll only ever take two inputs and only ever has one output. But still, it allows for significant, uh, significantly tidier setups, in my opinion. Uh, and I, I quite, quite like them. There. Doesn't that look lovely? Right. Okay. So the next thing we need to work on is the Cyan Star. Okay, and that'll take us to the combiner. Now, that is uh, one of the last um, new factories that you're going to get. Everything after that is going to be uh, an alternative 
uh, that makes one of the other factories better in some way. Perhaps it can handle more throughput, like it actually has more inputs, so it can process twice as many items or, or, or it can split things. In the, in the terms of the splitter, you can get a variant which will cut a shape into all four of its quarter, uh, quarters, so it has one input and four outputs, that sort of thing. Right, but we are definitely running up against time, so I'm not sure we're going to have enough time to finish the cyan star. Now, I could use the stars that I'm already producing. Am I using them for anything? Yes, I am. So I don't want to split those off. So it will come down to making another star. And it actually has blue and uh, green right there ready for us to use but i'm afraid we are out of time so i'm going to call it there if you are interested in seeing more and seeing uh, what we can get up to in the later levels again you get new content every level up to about level 18 and the numbers start getting very high we're still dealing with tiny numbers only like 2000 or something later levels are requiring several hundred thousand of a thing and then once you enter free play mode which is every level after 18 it will randomly uh, give you a shape so far we have not seen any um, layered shapes that's what the combiner will unlock it will unlock shapes upon shapes upon shapes upon shapes all combined into a single new uh, type of uh, of object and they can get pretty wild later on so do let me know down in the comments or with a like on the video if you'd like it to see us uh reach for that in a kind of a, a mini series of the game just to see how far it can go but i really do hope you have enjoyed this first taste as is and i hope to see you in the next but until then and as always do take care <laughs>